So for number 11, um, we want to take the area bounded between these curves and we want to rotate it about the x-axis like so. So I've drawn, um, I've drawn these curves here and let's see what happens when we rotate it. So when we rotate it, it's like we're taking this little height here that is the height between the uh, pink curve and the y-axis and then we are rotating it about the x-axis. So when we rotate it, it's like it forms a cylinder. And imagine that the cylinder is like uh, an infinitely thin sheet of paper so that when you unwrap it, it looks like this. Um, and so what is happening is we're going to, every, every little bit is going to be rotated and um, maybe I'm gonna do this in a stronger color here. So every little bit here is going to be rotated and will form a bigger cylinder like this. So we'll rotate it about the x-axis and it will form a cylinder. And as you can see, if we sum up all these cylinders from zero, which is where it starts, all the way out to y is equal to eight, we are going to get a volume. So the volume is the sum from zero to eight. And what we're summing is these areas, right? Um, these Think, think of them as these infinitely she sheet of papers that um, get wrapped around the x-axis. So this is like the cylinder unwrapped. So we're summing up these areas, and now we're summing them up as a function of y, because we're summing them up from y is equal to zero, so all the way down here, um, to y is equal to eight, so all the way up here. Um, so we're doing this vertical sum, so a y d y. And the reason that it is a function of y is because the further up that we go on the y-axis, um, the further that we go, the wider and wider our cylinder gets, right? So this area is definitely a function of y, and all that's left for us is to be able to express this area um, in terms of y. So let us do that. Uh, the first thing that we're going to notice here is that um, this part here, the the width of it is is this little section here and this section here that gets revolved is basically just and let me zoom that in so you guys can see um it is the difference between the x the line y is equal to zero right uh sorry the y axis which is x is equal to zero all the way out to where it touches this pink curve um so we can see here that in the smaller cylinder this line, it goes from the y-axis all the way out to where it touches the pink curve. So it is just basically the height of the pink curve, right? Um, but because we want the height in terms of y, since we're integrating with respect to y, what we're going to do is just convert it, right? So we have y is equal to x to the power of 3. And so we're going to take the cube root. So the cube root of y is equal to x. Um, these are equivalent, right? And the, old, the reason that we did that is so that we could express this area in terms of y. So we can see here that this length is um, the cube root of y because it's where it touches the pink curve. And now we just have to think about what this um, the height is, right? So uh, let me do that in a different color. I'll do it in orange. And as we can see here, this circumference, like so, when we cut it open, that is going to give us our height. And so our area is just base times height, right? And so this is the circumference of a circle. And any circle, the circumference is given by 2 pi r. And basically, we can see here that the radius is the distance from the center all the way out to whatever value of y I have, right? Um, let me just remove that so it doesn't get too crowded. Um, and maybe I'm going to erase some of these as well so that we can um, simplify our drawing a little bit. Okay, so we can see here that the radius is basically, it goes from the center to my y-axis. And this point here is just wherever I'm at on my y-axis, right? That's going to be where I evaluate my f of y. Um, where I evaluate, in this case, my cube root of y. So we can see here that the radius is just y. Therefore, um, this circumference here is given by 2 pi y. So that is 2 pi y. Um, so we can see, 
let me put that into a different color. We can see here that the area is base times height, which is equal to um, the base is just the section right here, and that is um, the cube root of y times the height, which is the circumference, so that is 2 pi y. And so when we simplify this, we're going to put the 2 pi outside, and we're just going to multiply cube root times y, which gives us y to the 4 third, because we're summing up the exponent. Um, so now we have an expression for the area, right? And so we can go ahead and integrate it. So this is the integral from 0 to 8, because we're summing it up vertically. I'm going to put the 2 pi outside, because it's a constant, 2 pi. And this gives me y to the 4 uh, to the power of 4 thirds dy. So I'm basically summing up um, across the y-axis, right? And we can now go ahead and integrate it. So 2 pi still stays outside. And now I get um, y to the, if I add plus 1 here, um, that gives us 7 over 3, and then times 3 sevenths. And all of this evaluated from 0 to 8. Um, which gives us, let's see, that's 2 pi times um, times 3 over 7 times 8 to the 7 thirds. Um, that's when we apply 8, our first boundary, and we don't have to apply 0 because it's just going to go to 0, right? Uh, and so when I calculate this, this is going to give me, let's see, let me put that in my calculator. Um, that is going to give me 768 pi over 7. So yeah, that's the volume that I get when I um, take the area bounded between these curves. I'm going to take little cross sections like so, which are, is just where it touches the pink curve, and then revolve it to form cylinders.